Wanna play another? Double or nothing? No. Come on, you can win your money back. Nah. I gotta pick up mile at 11 after work. <laughs> Before Philip Seymour Hoffman starred in films like Boogie Nights, Charlie Wilson's War, Magnolia, Almost Famous, The Talented Mr. Ripley, and of course Capote. I watched tapes of him for months and uh, I worked on how he spoke. And Before his work earned for him an estimated net worth of $35 million, critical acclaim, and awards from the Golden Globes, the Screen Actors Guild, the BAFTAs, and the Oscars. And I said, Jimmy, your novel's about a Negro homosexual who's in love with a Jew. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't you call that a problem? <laughs> Before becoming one of the greatest actors of his generation, working with the likes of Jennifer Lawrence, Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, Julia Roberts, Amy Adams, Viola Davis, Robin Williams, Kate Hudson, Anthony Hopkins, Woody Harrelson, Julianne Moore, and Jeff Bridges. Start talking and talk fast, you lousy bum. We've been frantically trying to reach you, dude. Where is my goddamn money, you bum? Before his struggles with addiction to heroin and prescription medication led to his tragic death in 2014 at the age of just 46. Philip Seymour Hoffman didn't like to talk about his personal life during his two decades in Hollywood. In various interviews, he stated that he didn't want to force his family into the spotlight and that he thought he was more interesting on screen if you didn't know anything about him. But his fatal struggles with drug abuse and love affair with costume designer Mimi O'Donnell have continued to fascinate many even years after his tragic death in 2014 on February 2nd, a day that lives on in infamy not just for the passing of Philip Seymour Hoffman, but also that of Sex Pistols' Sid Vicious. I, I, my, my life's been blessed, you know, I mean I get to work with great great actors, I've been over the years, I got to work with De Niro and, and these guys and I mean. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden, documenting the life and career of Philip Seymour Hoffman prior to his untimely passing, here for you on Before They Were Gone. Now in the past we've covered other actors including Heath Ledger and Robin Williams, perhaps you'll want to check those out, but let us know who's next in the comments down below, also feel free to leave your condolences. I accepted the part I went on a journey of discovery and found out everything I needed to find out. And the more I found out, the more interesting and kind of obsessed I became about it. And Philip Seymour Hoffman was born on July 23, 1967 in Fairport, New York. A small suburb of Rochester, he was raised with two sisters, Jill and Emily, and his brother Gordy. His mother worked as an elementary school teacher, a lawyer, and eventually a judge. His father worked as an executive for the tech giant Xerox. While his dad was part of Philip's life throughout his childhood, his mother became his primary caregiver after his folks divorced when he was nine years old. While Philip was baptized a Roman Catholic, his family was not particularly religious. Rather than wasting his Sundays at church, he was enjoying sports like baseball and wrestling. Ooh, he would have been a great wrestler. Early on, I was just into baseball and stuff and um, comics and stuff like that. Needless to say, he developed a passion for acting early on. His favorite film was Goodfellas, and actors he credited as inspiration include Daniel Day Lewis, Paul Newman, Meryl Streep, and Christopher Walken. But his first love wasn't Hollywood films, it was the theater. When he was just 12 years old, he saw a production of Arthur Miller's All My Sons. From there, he was hooked. He dragged his mother out to the theater regularly and even saw teenage Robert Downey Jr. perform on stage. As a youngster, Philip was a talented athlete, but after injuring his neck at the age of 14, he needed to find a new hobby. Already in love with the theater, it made sense for him to get into acting, but what really inspired him to get involved? Well, a girl he had a crush on was in the drama club, so he joined to get close to her. I definitely feel that myself. I got into hosting because I had a crush on Ryan Secret. What? Who wrote that? They'll make you look he, all shiny. I mean, look at that. Shiny. Just to touch me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, I want you to take a shot. This is actually, look at that. Love oil. When Philip was 17 years old, he was selected to attend the New York State Summer School of the Arts. It was there that he originally met Dan Futterman and Bennett Miller, who would one day become, respectfully, the writer and director of Philip Seymour Hoffman's magnum opus, Capote. By then, Philip was taking his passion for acting very seriously. Towards the end of his time at Fairpoint High School, he applied for several drama programs and was accepted by the prestigious Tisch School of the Arts. He then spent his summers before college training at the Circle in the Square Theater's summer program. You gotta be thanking that girl he first fell for, for hooking him up or getting him in. 
Cause apparently he was killing it. While at Tisch he was a standout student but also found time to co-found the Bolstoy Ensemble acting troupe and support himself by working as an usher. But at the same time he was beginning to get addicted to drugs and alcohol. After graduating in 1989 he checked into a drug rehabilitation program and worked as much as one could hope. He remained sober for 23 years. After getting out of rehab, Philip continued to support himself with odd jobs, many in customer service, and scored parts in off Broadway plays. His first on screen appearance would come in 1991 in an episode of Law and Order. They were partners, they became friends. Tonight, one will die. The season premiere of Law and Order, NBC Next. The same year he nabbed his first film credit for a role in Triple Bogey on a par 5 hole. Is this the guy that's writing the movie about you? Yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a breaking point happened for Philip in 1992 when he scored a role in the Al Pacino flick Scent of a Woman. Like I say, it was blurry. Uh, I can't see without my contacts. He went on to scoop up parts in Money for Nothing, The Getaway, When a Man Loves a Woman, Nobody's Fool, and The Striker, before being cast to appear in Paul Thomas Anderson's debut feature film, Hard Eight. The legendary director must have liked his acting chops because despite his work on Twister, he brought him back for Boogie Nights. Kel, how much time is that? I'm sorry, What sir, the hell please. is the matter with I'm you? I'm sorry. I, uh, Why did you do that, Scotty? Uh, you look at me sometimes. What? I want to know if you like me. Word must have got around in the successful artsy director circles because the Coen brothers then tapped him for a part in the cult classic, The Big Lebowski. They did not receive the money. Her life was in your hands. This is our concern, dude. No, man, nothing is fucked here. Philip would go on to star alongside Robin Williams in Patch Adams, Robert De Niro in Flawless, Matt Damon in The Talented Mr. Ripley, and a whole bunch of talented actors in Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia. Sick man. He's a dying man, and he's sick. And he has asked me to help him, to help him find his son. Despite his massive success in Hollywood, Philip continued to work the theater throughout his career. In 1995, he joined the off-Broadway Labyrinth Theater Company, where he directed and produced countless stage productions. In 1999, Philip directed the play called In Arabia We'd All Be Kings. The costume designer for the play was Mimi O'Donnell. The two began dating, moved in together, and remained in a relationship for 14 years. In 2003, they welcomed their first child, Cooper. His daughter, Tallulah, and Willa followed in 2006 and 2008. Philip's love for the theater remained strong throughout his career. He played Iago in the 2009 production of Othello, a role I've actually played. Divinity of Hell, One Devil's Will, The Blackest Sin. Anyway. He also was nominated for Tony's for his Broadway performance in Death of a Salesman, Long Day's Journey in Tonight, and True West. If it wasn't John, you wouldn't have done it. I. I don't think so. I can't think of it. And I mean that. I, I, I don't. I, you know, if John didn't call me, I wouldn't have done it. Perhaps the biggest turning point in his career was when he played the title character in the 2005 film Capote. He couldn't bear to be alone with his thoughts. It was too painful. For his role in the film, he gained near universal critical praise. He also picked up a Golden Globe, SAG Award, BAFTA, and an Oscar in his Academy Award acceptance speech. He used his time to thank his mom. Her passions became my passions, and uh, you know, be proud, mom, because I'm proud of you, and we're here tonight, and <laughs> it's so good. Thank you. Around this time, I remember little me was hoping that this guy would take on the role of the penguin in a Christopher Nolan Batman film. Sadly, that never happened. The same year, Philip also received his first and only Emmy Award, nominated for his supporting role in the HBO miniseries Empire Falls. He got his next Oscar nom for his role in Charlie Wilson's War, then another for Doubt. Around this time, he also worked on critically acclaimed independent films like The Savages in 2007 and Synecdoche, New York in 2008. He continued to be a favorite of Paul Thomas Anderson's with a role in The Master in 2012 and a recurring part in the Hunger Games series starting with Catching Fire in 2013. At the time of his death, he was still in the midst of filming the scenes for The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 2. In 2013, Philip relapsed and checked himself into rehab. Just months before his death, Philip separated from his baby mama Mimi. He remained a devoted father. In fact, it was after failing to pick up his kids that he was discovered to have passed away. The tragic death of actor Philip Seymour Hoffman, a performer who was known for his extraordinary range, 
He was also known for his honesty about the struggles he faced away from the public eye. On February 2nd, 2014, he was found dead in the bathroom of his Manhattan apartment. There was a syringe in his arm and a mix of heroin, cocaine, benzodiazepines, and amphetamines. His funeral was held on February 7th and was attended by many of his former co-stars. David Barkatz established the American Playwriting Foundation in his memory, awarding an annual prize of $45,000 to the author of an unproduced play. The room or the theater or wherever you are and you've acted as well as you can, there's no way that the people who have watched you will forget it. Many will miss this legendary actor, but his work lives on in the many films he blessed us with. He was truly very, very talented. As for the rest of the story, well that's pretty much it. Because this is before they were gone. My name is Michael McCredden. We make all sorts of biography videos here on this channel. We actually have a playlist for those who have left us. Um, we do all sorts of people. We do actors, we do singers, we do rappers. Uh, we even do some political leaders. So browse around, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in another video. Also, condolences down below, and let me know your favorite Philip Seymour Hoffman movie. Be interested to find out.